nothing strikes more fear into the hearts of airline passengers and pilots alike than the thought of a mid-air collision, especially at night 35,000 feet above the earth. Mid-air collisions used to be a somewhat common occurrence in the early days of commercial aviation, particularly before the days of TCAS, the Cockpit Traffic Alert and Collision Avoidance System, now installed on virtually every commercial aircraft in the sky. But even after the installation of TCAS on the flight deck, it's still up to the captain in charge of that aircraft to be the final arbiter when it comes to believing the computer or trusting the air traffic controller's voice in his or her ear. One such devastating decision where a pilot failed to trust his gut over his TCAS happened as recently as 2002, when in the moments prior to a mid-air collision between a DHL-757 and Bashkirian Airlines Flight 2397 with 69 on board, TCAS warned the pilot of Flight 2397 to climb to avoid a collision with the DHL Flight 611. But at the same time TCAS was telling the captain to climb, the air traffic controllers were demanding that he descend immediately. But instead of trusting his training and equipment, Flight 2397's captain trusted the human air traffic controller over that of his TCAS. And that fateful decision resulted with the loss of all on board both aircraft, 71 in all. So one might think that all pilots, as well as air traffic controllers, would have learned in the wake of that disaster from that horrific mistake, and would be sure not to repeat it in the future. However, that isn't the case. It still takes an alert, well-trained, confident pilot to trust his computers and equipment and gut intuition over that of a human air traffic controller giving him the rare wrong instruction. Still, some pilots, especially those with less experience, may tend to rely on ATC, assuming they would have more information. But that assumption could be a deadly one. So that brings us to the incident that just occurred on June 15th. When had it not been for an alert and confident Sri Lankan pilot, I would surely be reporting on the worst aviation death toll in history, with well over 600 lives lost. According to a story in the Daily Mirror, Sri Lankan Airlines Flight 504 from London to the Sri Lankan capital Colombo, carrying 275 passengers, entered the Turkish airspace when Anchor in Turkey Air Control informed the pilot to climb to 35,000 feet from 33,000 feet where they were flying. The Sri Lankan pilot and crew who had been vigilant had detected a British Airways flight carrying about the same amount of passengers just 15 miles away, approaching them flying at 35,000 feet and informed the air control at Ankara that there was a flight already above them. But even after checking, the Ankara air traffic control had informed the captain that they had not detected any flight at 35,000 feet on the radar, so the Sri Lankan flight was told again to climb to 35,000 feet. But the pilot, who was alerted by his plane's TCAS, also that the British Airways flight was visible on the plane's radar, refused to climb and told Ankara Air Traffic, go back and look again. Soon after, when the ATC finally located the British Air flight, suddenly they got the picture and told the plane not to climb to 35,000 feet. To which I imagine the captain responded, no sh Sherlock. Because if the captain had climbed to the altitude as directed by ATC, the aircraft would have faced a mid-air collision with the British Airways aircraft, which was flying at a faster speed than the Sri Lanka jet, which would have resulted in the largest loss of life ever in aviation history. As soon as the plane landed and the passengers and crew safely exited the aircraft, the crew immediately filed an incident report. The most striking part of this story, other than the obvious near-catastrophic consequences, was how come the Ankara ATC wasn't able to see the British Air Boeing 777 right above the Sri Lankan A330? Not once, but twice, they tried to get the Sri Lankan jet to climb to 35,000 feet in front of the British Airways jet. The Turkish Air Traffic Control Center is said to be one of the most efficient in the world and is said to be the best in Europe, so I'm sure they'll find out what happened and correct it. But this brings me to my greater point. And that is that an airline captain is the final decision maker, and he has the sole responsibility for the safety of his or her passengers. As a matter of fact, this standard was written into international aviation law back in 1945 at what was called the Chicago Convention. In Annex 6 of the Chicago Convention, Standard 4.5.1, 
It states that the pilot in command shall be responsible for the safety of all crew members, passengers, and cargo on board when the doors are closed. The pilot in command shall also be responsible for the operation and safety of the airplane from the moment the airplane is ready to move for takeoff until the moment it comes to rest at the end of the flight and the engines are shut down. So that leaves no doubt that the buck always stops with the captain of the aircraft. So regardless of any order they get from the ground, if the captain feels it's unsafe for his passengers or crew, he or she is the final decision maker. And even though at times ATC or even their own airlines may not like the delays some of these decisions may cause, the system was set up to work exactly the way it did 35,000 feet over Turkey on June 15th of this year. Had the pilot of Sri Lankan Air Flight 504 wavered in any way and went against his better judgment and reacted to the order of ATC, the final blame would have rested with the pilot and not with ATC. So kudos to that flight crew and the captain in particular for an outstanding job and potentially saving the lives of over 600 people. Like I said, 99% of the time the ATC crews are excellent, hardworking, and good at what they do. But the system is designed for that 1% of the time where it doesn't work properly. And that's why the buck stops with the captain. So do you have any near-miss aviation stories, either as a passenger or a pilot? I'd love to hear about it. So please be sure to let me know down below. And before we go, I need to give a shout out to one of the best and most consistent supporters of the channel, and that is Dr. G. Once again, Dr. G has invested in another 20 cups of virtual coffee. That always goes a long way to support the work we do here. So Dr. G, whoever and wherever you are, thank you. Well, that's gonna wrap it up for now. If you haven't yet, please consider subscribing. And as always, on your way out, don't forget to like, share, and ring the bell. And remember, leave the rubber on the runway and your troubles on the ground. And I will see you next time in the air. Yeah, this is Maximus.